and we wanted to talk to you a little bit about our upcoming certification lab that's going on in Nashville in October 14th and 15th and we know that there's many people listening to you to us right now but I have some special guests with me I'm Mark McDonald and I'm the brand new director of communications at uh, Community of Faith just outside of Houston Texas and I also have uh, some friends with me Jerry True, Stephen Brewster, Phil Battle and we want to make sure that you understand what's coming up and how it could really be a, a good value to you and uh, I guess let's. And we uh, wanted to talk to you a little bit about. Let's talk a little bit about um, uh, each other. So why don't we we start with Stephen Brewster? Tell us a little bit about yourself. You talk to you a little bit yeah, about absolutely. Our, My name's Steve, and I get to work at Point wow. Church as the uh, communications and creative arts pastor. And it's a really great place to work. It's a lot of fun, and I've gotten to do this at Cross Point for about three years. But I've been in church work for probably about five or six years. Jerry, why don't you chime in? Hey, my name is Jerry True. I work at Oak Hills Church in San Antonio, Texas. Been working in communications for about 14 years now and I uh, love doing what I do at uh, Oak Hills Church and look forward to the conversation today. Bill? Hey guys, my name is Phil Bowdle. I'm a uh, communications director at Westridge Church outside of Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, I've been doing this here in this role for about four years and have been in communications for about six or seven years. That's awesome. And I just wanted you to know that uh, I've been doing this for 27 years. I've been in communications and I took a different path. I guess I went through uh, ad agencies and then 13 years ago we started uh, Pinpoint Creative Group and be known for something. And uh, that is kind of the last preamble before I actually just accepted a job here in Houston, Texas. And uh, so I get to switch from what I've been doing and helping many churches with many, many different sizes. And now that uh, I'm, I'm going to be full-time here with Community of Faith, which is a, a large ministry. So it'll be interesting just to see how... The things that I've been helping and telling churches over the, the last few years, how it's actually going to translate when I'm in a full-time role. And a lot of you are probably either just transitioning into that role. We know a lot of people are just in the, their first five years as communication coordinator or communications um, uh, assistant or director of communications in their church. And that's really what we, you know, our heart and our passion is to figure out how do you go to that the certification. And the certification is October 14th and 15th from Nash in Nashville, Tennessee. And, uh, and everyone is invited, whether you have many years under your belt or whether you're just starting out, this is the place for you. There is so much knowledge just, you know, when I when I think about Jerry and Brewster and, and Phil and myself, I mean, we, we want to share and help and mentor, and that's what this is, is going to be. It's for a select group of people. We're only going to allow 50 people in at the very first time, and, uh, and we hope that you're going to be one of them. You know, one of the fun questions when we were talking about what are we going to talk about and I'm actually looking forward to hearing these answers because those first five years in ministry and working as communications person on a church staff I am sure that uh, there are some mistakes that when we look back on them we think how would we have done those over and maybe why don't we start with you uh, Brewster and tell us a little bit about in those first five years, anything that you would have done differently? Totally. I think one of the biggest things that I've learned in the first few years was uh, I would confuse a lot of times cool with uh, communication. And a lot of times I would try to create art that was like really amazing art, but it didn't have, it was, it may have been cool, but it didn't communicate properly. And a lot of times I put more value on making something cool than making it uh, connect. And I think there, there's that trap, especially with social media the way it is today. Like we see all of our peers that are doing all these cool things and we feel that pressure of like, I need to create something that's amazing. And 
in, in trying to create something amazing, I think a lot of times we lose the meat of what we're really trying to do and the, and the message and the purpose behind it. And I wish I'd have learned that very early on. I, I'd have shifted my filters. Communication first, really cool stuff second. And you can still do cool stuff, but how you process and where you prioritize that, really, I, I needed to learn that early on. That's cool. What about you, Jerry? Well, I, my, my big challenge was pace. Um, the last church I was at, they called me Buzz Lightyear. And so my, you know, walking down the hallways, whatever it is, I want to get it done. And so I would take too big of a step too quickly. And so I had to really learn that little steps can make a big change over time. And so I was passionate about improving, but my improvements and those ideas really impacted real people, and they led to unhealthy tensions because of my pace. So I had to learn how to, to process um, with people and then make small incremental steps. And really, it's about caring about people more than it is caring about the progress that, that I wanted to make. Um, and in so doing, what that did was people then became more open to considering the ideas that we had when they knew we cared deeply about them. So. We wanted to help people get used to those new boundaries gradually is what I found I needed to, to really improve in. That's great. What about you, Phil? Yeah, mine's kind of similar. I know when I went into this role as um, communications director here at Westridge, there was never a person in this role before. And so when I walked in, I, everywhere I looked, there was uh, their needs and there were things that needed to get done and improved. And it was just overwhelming. And so I think my first it didn't hit me until about a year and a half in that I just realized my pace um, was not healthy and it wasn't sustainable. And that was impacting not only um, how I could lead well and, and work well here, but also even just just my own personal health. Thing got, things got out of whack of where I, where I felt like was healthy and sustainable. So it, it you know, I just had too many late nights and early mornings and I had to really kind of refocus that learning if I was healthy as a leader and how I'm, how I'm, you know, working as myself, then, then that allows me to help make sure that my team and volunteers are healthy as well. And when I kind of really tried to make that intentional switch, it really changed the game for our, our, our team, um, and it grew faster um, in, in a way uh, when I just decided that's, that's got to be number one of being healthy and sustainable. That's interesting because sustainability is, is so crucial, and I'm sure that a lot of people who are listening in right now um, you're just wondering how on earth are we going to be able to do everything that we have on our plate? You know, how can we sustain perfect communications in everything that we do, and and making sure that everything is um, is done the way that it should be? And I'm sure that uh, I think it was you, Phil, that that used the word overwhelmed. And uh, I I know when we deal with a lot of churches that we talk to people who are just so overwhelmed with all the things that are changing. There's so much technology change, so much print change, social media, everything that, that is being thrown at communications people today, I'm sure you probably feel overwhelmed. And, and that's what this certification lab is going to be about. It's talking to the experts. We're going to help you as well as you connect with other people who are – uh, in need of mentoring as well. And what we're going to do is throughout the year, this isn't just a two-day event. I mean, it is October 14th and 15th in Nashville, Tennessee, but this is going to be an ongoing thing that throughout the year we're going to have ways that you're going to be able to connect with people that you meet there so that you can help support each other, you can challenge each other, you can sharpen each other's swords. And, and essentially, this mentoring is going to become part of this certification that we we really believe that every director of communications or anybody that's in communications in the church really is up to quality so that you're doing the right things and being very intentional with what you're doing as well. Well, if you're just joining us, you probably figured it out. We're talking about the certification lab that's coming up for uh, the Center for Church Communications. And if you don't know who Center for Church Communications is, they're the home of uh, Church Marketing Sucks blog, where you have learned lots and lots of information about church communications. And this certification lab is just really going that one more step. And if you, if you come to this two-day event, you're going to get uh, a network of people who are in the same boat with you. Well, you know what, some of the fun stuff that we have is uh, amongst ourselves, we talk a lot about 
the things that have happened in the past. But more importantly, um, maybe Brewster, why don't you start and talk a little bit about what you're learning right now? What are some some current things that that are kind of exciting you? Well, I think one of the things that is exciting for us, and it's a big challenge at the same time, but um, our team is responsible for the communication of all of the departments in our church, like probably like most of the people that are listening today. And we've um, got more job requests than we've ever had in my in my time at Crosspoint. And uh, my guys came in and they were kind of exasperated the other day and they were like, this is a lot of stuff. I don't know how we're going to manage all this. And I was told them how excited I was because that means that our church is doing more ministry than ever. And I think what I'm learning and what I'm trying to help uh, coach our team through right now is that every job isn't a job, but it's an opportunity to do ministry in your community, in helping another ministry communicate better or be a little bit more polished. Uh, it, every job that comes in has lives that live behind it, and they matter. And that's the biggest, most important thing. And a lot of times, um, that's what our ministry gets to be, is helping other people's ministries be better or be more polished or communicate a little more clearly. And just learning that and then helping our team learn that right now has been – it's just fun because it, it, it renews that excitement of hope and opportunity that lives there that sometimes we can forget because we have a stack of to-dos. And the to-dos are important, but we forget sometimes, I think, that there's lives attached to each of those. Amen. Wow. Good. Jerry? That's good. You know, um, it's some, something along the lines of uh, what Stephen just said there um, it really kind of ties into where we're at also. We're learning that we have to remove the personality from the requests that are coming in. Too often um, in the past, we have, um, if, if we really liked the person, we really wanted to do the project for them. But if there was that person that tended to be a little bit on the edge with us or pushy or demanding, you know, their, their project seemed to go to the bottom of the list. And so what we're really working on is trying to remove personality from it. And really, personality shouldn't be the decision driver. When we haven't defined the yes, people may begin to think that we're going to play favorites and that we like other people more than, than them. And, and so it, it really undermines the trust of the entire team and organization. And so we're learning to filter the requests by a defined criteria instead of approving based off of who comes to us first or who seems to be having the most important request at the time. That's so subjective. So it's taken us some time to really negotiate that criteria with our leadership team. But in time, they came to that place where they understood that what we want to say is we want to say yes to everyone. We come with a yes heart. But in the end, if we try to communicate everything, um, then doing that is really going to make it impossible to communicate clearly. So the filters we're creating right now and we're learning how to create are helping us identify what is the yes, and then it helps us more quickly determine what we need to decline in order to communicate effectively. And, and we're, we're very similar to what Steven's doing. We've got six campuses and, and we're central, a central support team that, that really responds to the needs of six locations, six churches, some 300 attending, some 5,000 attending. So we have a little church kind of need in some cases and we also have the big church kind of need. And we've got to learn how to, to manage that um, without letting people feel like we're playing favorites with them. So it's all about right now trying to learn how to get personality out of the decision process. That's good too. What about you, Phil? I think that something that I've learned more and more, but really has really hit here recently, is that like I can't let long-term vision get lost in short short-term tasks. Um, it's every every morning you get that feeling when you get just pounded with emails, and it's overwhelming to think through all the you know the things that need to get designed, created, the videos that need to get shot, and I just learned that reactionary um, workflow can get overwhelming, and it can you can lose sight of some of the biggest things that matter, you know. So I've just been really just trying to focus in on getting at least once a week or even you know once every two weeks a time a block of time just to kind of get a 10,000 foot view of where we are as a church where our team is um, where we need to go and make sure that we're building time to build you know things that matter for the long term so that we don't get lost in you know maybe updating the graphic but not um, you know doing some bigger initiatives that need to happen that, that are not one big step but are a lot of a lot of time spent um, slowly over time that's good yeah, and I guess that the the main thing that we're hearing co constantly from churches from that are small. I mean, here I am I, at this 
you know, brand new uh, church where I've just started to be the, the director of communications. I mean, they have thousands of people who come on the weekend. But even when we're talking with some, some people that have so few people in the pews, I guess that the big thing right now is everyone still loves their print materials and how much investment is going into those print materials. And what ends up happening is that most churches have been uh, developed around the hub of the of print materials, that print hub. And, and what we're trying to do is it's – the entire world, the reason why magazines and newspapers are all going under is because people are switching to a digital hub and churches are, are reticent to be able to do that and and what you know what we always hear is yeah but everyone wants that bulletin or that worship guide in their hand but what it really is is where do people trust the communication that's coming from the church and you know, for years, for decades, we've had this bulletin, this worship guide that has become the most up-to-date, most trusted source. So nobody wants to switch away from it because the moment that they go to a, a digital hub, you know, the website or, or social media, it's not always up-to-date. So what we want to try to do is make sure that we get the trusted hub, the digital hub, to have the same type of processes to make sure that things are as current and, and as accurate as they are with the print materials. Yeah, I agree, uh, Mark. Um, in fact, we've seen that kind of that work of transition over the last um, five years. We used to be 80% print, 20% digital, and now it's flipped. We're now we're 20% print, 80% digital. And what we found in, in making that transition is we're now going where people are already at to communicate with them. Rather than having them come to our building to communicate with them, we're actually out among them seven days a week having a conversation where they're already gathering. And there's real power in that. So that, that's a really exciting part about where the church is going in its communication is that opportunity to communicate seven days a week in a conversation ongoing that encourages them in their, in their spiritual walk and their walk with Christ. And the buzzword in all of that is it's the most cost-effective way to do things, and it's the easiest thing um, as soon as you have that process in place to be able to keep it up to date. That's right. We've well, been doing that especially here lately with thinking things digitally first because then it can translate to a church app, to social media, to your website, um, to so many different platforms when you think digital first where print has a pretty short shelf life and delivery span for it. That's true. Good. Booster, anything? The only thing I have is that I'm in the process of making that transition right now, so I need to learn from these guys how to how to make that transition because it's a it's you know um, it's a sacred cow I think in a lot of our organizations you know that people love paper for some reason and uh, they don't care how much it costs they love it and they don't want to lose it for ones and zeros but the the ability you know I came from a marketing background and in marketing the golden the, like the holy grail of marketing is attention and intersecting somebody right where they where they live, and so digital allows that to happen a lot easier for sure. Well, as you can probably see, there is so much I learn from these guys every time that I talk with them, and I know that you can learn from them as well. And this is one time in October, October fourteenth and fifteenth. And it's the Center for Church Communications is putting this on. It's a certification lab. You'll be able to interact with all of us, ask us lots of questions. And and by, you know, the biggest extreme benefit of all of this is that you're going to be able to network with other people who are going through exactly what you're going through. We're going to help you create strategy. We're going to talk about uh, creativity, leadership, communication skills. And, uh, I mean, really, you just don't want to miss this. And the, the most important thing that I want you to hear is at the end of next week, the price goes up. So if, uh, if you haven't signed up um, in the next week, then the price is going to be uh, raised just a little bit as it gets closer. But most importantly, because you're listening to this right now, if you use one of our names, so if you use Brewster, Jerry, Mark, or Phil at checkout, we're actually going to give you an, an additional $50 off. So you really do need to sign up. We're excited about this. 
It's the Center for Church Communications Certification Lab, October 14th and 15th in Nashville, Tennessee. And you know what? I know that each one of us, we just hope to meet you and see you there and work with you Absolutely. throughout the entire year. Absolutely. Great we'll see you, in, see you in Nashville. All right.